Well, knowledge is power. They just need to understand what they're doing as they go into it. Um, I'm thankful that there is a process to help people in that case. I'm Aaron Lovett, and here with me today is Marty Davenport. Marty, tell us about yourself and, and uh, who you work for. Hi, Aaron. Uh, Marty Davenport. Uh, I'm a mortgage lender with First Community Mortgage here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I've uh, been in the business for about 20 years. Uh, Aaron and I have known each other for a few years now and, and I had the pleasure to work with, with him and appreciate the chance to talk today. And uh, it's just a, a wild time. So it's a good chance to put some information out for, for folks and just general information, you know, not even soliciting business, just trying to let people know, you know, their options and, and uh, maybe maybe put some fears to rest and, and give some advice that will protect them financially through this this, uh, this crisis that will hopefully be short-lived. So. It'll be short -lived right mm -hmm. we hope so right we, are, um, we certainly hope so <laughs> hey here's a question for you um so have you ever seen a market like we've seen the last three or four weeks wow the swings in the market the way it is no um uh, my wife told me recently i was using the, the word unprecedented too many times <laughs> in my day-to-day -day speech um because you know, it got to where you would see the market, uh, and, and, and specifically, I watched the mortgage market, the mortgage-backed security, securities market, and you would see these swings of over 100 basis points, and it got to where you didn't even flinch because it was happening several times a day some days. And uh, and it was just extremely volatile, um, fueled by, well, I think several weeks ago, Aaron, I told you at a sales meeting, I asked, who's scared of the coronavirus? And a few people kind of tentatively raised their, raised their hands up and and I said, well, the markets are terrified of the coronavirus. And we saw, you know, unprecedented declines. There's that word again. Um, in the in the mortgage-backed securities, we saw this uh, in the rates, excuse me, the mortgage-backed securities went up. And so the rates declined and uh, had this big refinance boom out of nowhere. Um, unfortunately, those fears have continued and been validated with, with the things that have gone on in the last few weeks. And uh, and so we've seen you know, massive losses in the stock market. Um, seen losses in the bonds. We've seen uh, a, a two trillion dollar stimulus package. Um, we've seen the Fed commit to buying unlimited mortgage-backed securities, which actually was meant to shore up the the securities market and did not. Um, it actually caused more volatility and actually it stabilized in the last couple of weeks because they backed off. They quit buying so much. So um, so things have kind of stabilized. We've had fairly steady the last couple of weeks. So. Um, so we're not back at the lows we were a few weeks ago, but you know, fear um, fear breeds movement um, with money, and uh, it's just a it's just a crazy volatile volatile time. So I, uh, I certainly can't say I've ever seen anything quite like this. This is unique. Well, that that sounds like a pretty good review of of, uh, of where where we came from. Where are we now? What what does it look like now for a buyer that is that is starting to to house shop? Yeah, uh, it's quite a bit more stable. Rates have stabilized. I mean, you're going to get some variance when you're out there looking at rates. And, and for you know disclosure purposes, I'd be glad to quote rates for somebody, but I just ask them to reach out to me personally. Everybody's situation is different, but rates are really good. Um, we'll just say in the threes um, to low fours, depending on your situation, uh, maybe down into the middle to low threes, depending on your situation. So um, depending on what you're doing, it can be you know a pretty big range. Um, but there's still some issues uh, with the market. Um, you know, those massive swings caused massive margin calls for some mortgage companies um, that can destabilize an individual company. Um, you know, First Community is, is bank owned, so we are not concerned about that. We are very stable and, and strong. There's a lot of good companies out there that are. There are some that are being hurt right now due to the volatility in the market. Um, you know, forbearance is a big thing right now, and that's, um, that, that's it's a scary thing. Um, people think forbearance and forgiveness are the same thing, and it's not. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the difference then between forbearance and forgiveness. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, well, forgiveness would be would be a forgiven, you know, a forgiven dollar figure. So, so you're, you're just not going to collect a payment for a period of time or whatever. Forbearance is a different animal, um, and what that means is you got to understand the terms under which you're doing it. It's forgiveness means you're not going to be owing it in the future. Forbearance just means you're pushing it down the road. So. If you look at a hypothetical scenario of a forbearance on a mortgage payment for six months, okay, well, in month seven, you owe your mortgage payment plus six months worth, um, or or they may tack it on to the end of it. 
Um, you know, there can be different terms. So you have to understand what you're doing, but it's really an option of last resort. If people can pay their mortgage, mortgage uh, payment, they should. And that's not a self-serving comment. The reason why is your mortgage servicer, the person you're actually paying your payment to or the entity you're paying your payment to, doesn't typically own your mortgage. That is owned by an aggregator, a large, large company that actually has that, that mortgage sitting there. The servicer is just collecting payments and distributing it out, the mortgage payment, the escrows, the mortgage insurance, that sort of thing. If you quit paying your payment, that servicer still has to pay it to the aggregator. And so it's, it's, um, you know, landlords are in that situation. You can't pay your rent. Your landlord still has to pay his mortgage. So it's just, it, it, that money is still being paid out by somebody and companies aren't designed for that. So what we saw is servicers looking at large hits they were about to take because every other news story was talking about forbearance and how, if you're having, if you're anticipating trouble, if you don't think you can make your payment, you know, you can look into forbearance and even even at the federal level, we had politicians talking about, you know, forbearance and forbearance is part of the stimulus package, but it doesn't change the terms of your note on your mortgage. And that's that's an issue. And uh, and we don't want to look down the road for three or six months and somebody got forbearance. They they got through this this troubled time. They're back at work. They think everything's good. And then based on the terms of their forbearance, now they owe this money, they got to pay it now, and they could end up in default or in foreclosure. You don't want that. Um, no. I joking say sometimes that mortgage companies uh, would, would love to have your, your money. They don't want your house. Uh, they don't want to foreclose on your house. Um, money is lost by all parties in that case. Um, but, uh, but a mortgage is unique. It's governed by a note, and that note follows that, that, that mortgage situation as long as it exists till it's paid off. So you have to fulfill the terms of it. So two questions then that, that come to mind. One is uh, who decides whether those deferred payments are paid immediately after the end of the forbearance period um, or at the, or just tacked onto the end? Is that a negotiation that happens or is that also already written into the, the terms of the current current mortgage? It, it's not. It can it has some variable terms. So um, that is something that you would want to discuss with your servicer. So um, I mean, let's face it. In this situation, there's people that have been out of work for several weeks now and may not be back for to work for several weeks. There are going to be people that are going to have no choice but to seek forbearance. That's understandable. That's why the, that's why it exists. But um, they need to make sure they understand the terms of what they're doing going into it and have a plan on how to get out of it in the end, um, because there, there's certain limiting factors. I mean, so you could have um, a situation where they take those six months of payments and just add it to the end of the mortgage. That way you don't have essentially a, a small balloon payment due in six months. Not not real small, but smaller than an actual balloon might be. Um, and that, that's probably the most stable scenario that could be offered. But even that has limiting factors because um, if you do a, a modification or been in forbearance, you may not be able to refinance for a period of time as well. So there's certain Good things question. like that, that that really limits you on what, on what you can do in the future. I like you and I have had this conversation. I like giving people their options. I like telling people what they can do. It's not a cookie cutter mentality of what mortgage is going to fit every person. But once you kind of put yourself in the forbearance box, you, you're going to follow the cookie cutter on whatever box you're in. So, um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully people aren't putting themselves in a situation that's, that's going to be unstable worse in the future than it is today. And that, that was, that was my second question. Could mm -hmm. someone in deferment refi? Uh, it, it, to, after to a period of time. Of, after a period of time. After a period of time. But it's, um, it, it, I, I don't want to get into quoting specifics because I haven't looked at the specifics. Um, but uh, but it, it, you have to wait a while. We'll say, I think it's two years, honestly. Okay. All right. Good. That's good information, though. That's a, a fine warning to anybody that is thinking, well, I'll just, I'll just defer my payments and because maybe they're afraid of their right. job situation. Maybe they're wanting to, to hang on to some of their income. Right. That sounds like uh, they should be, be very cautious before they just look at that as uh, a, um, an easy thing. To do. Well, knowledge is power. They just need to understand what they're doing as they go into it. Um, I'm thankful that there is a process to help people in that case. They just need to understand it. Uh, otherwise they can get themselves into trouble and, and kind of going back to the, the question you asked that took us in this direction. How is that impacting people ready to purchase right now? Um, there is greater risk on government loans uh, for the servicer 
And so we have seen a constriction in, the, in that in the industry. Uh, we've seen some uh, competitors um, back out of doing government loans below a 680 credit score. Uh, we have not done that, um, but we have seen some just because the risk is greater to the servicer on those loans uh, based on how they have to service it. And, and they just, they don't want to take a higher risk until the situation is resolved. So um, we're also seeing uh, the pricing, the, the rates go up on those deals um, in the industry. So um, that we can still help those folks, but it's, it's tightening things up a little bit. On the other end of this, when this is over, we believe that's going to change right back. We believe everything will go back to normal. Um, just like they were saying this morning on a, on a report I was, I was reading that they expect housing to be what brings us out of this when it's, when it passes, that this should be a short term issue in our economy and that housing will, will help us come out of it and not really lose any value. I, most of the talking heads aren't feeling like we're going to lose any value in real estate and certainly not any long term value. It's not going to be a, a the, like the great recession. Um, we may be in a recession. Recession is a normal part of the economic cycle, but losing home value during a recession is not. So there's no reason to be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Among the factors that, that drove that recession that we saw in 2007, 2008, 2009, and have been coming out of for years now, um, the, uh, the lending standards were significantly different and looser than they are now. And I think we also had uh, a glut of homes on the market, unlike now where we have a shortage of, of income. Shortage of homes, yeah. Yeah, so just uh, two different, two different uh, time, you know, times in history, I suppose. Yeah, it's not the same. A lot of people feel like it's the same right now just because there was high unemployment during that time. But like unemployment right now has grown faster than ever in history. But look at the reasons why we're being told by our, our elected leaders to stay home. So um, being told that non-essential services need to stop for a period of time, be it two weeks or 30 days or whatever. So during that time, of course, unemployment is going to go up. But there's no reason to think that it won't swing back uh, as long as this you know, moves through in a reasonable period of time. And, uh, and there are you know, bailouts to help these, these small businesses to, to keep, keep going. Um, and I know a lot of people, it's been wonderful to see Murfreesboro small businesses pull together. To, to see uh, the restaurants work together, the service industries work together to support each other during this time. It's, it's been really nice to see that. Yeah. Talk for a second, if you, if you can, about um, how this has affected your day-to-day -day work life and, and what's, <laughs> what's going on with, uh, with Marty at FCU. Well, uh, I actually still am coming into the office. Um, my office uh, is only right now me and two other people, so I see the same two people every day. Um, mortgage industry is decentralized in a, in a lot of ways. Um, our underwriters and closers and funders and a lot of those folks that are kind of the, the operations folks in the back that, uh, that, that the public doesn't really deal with directly, um, they, are, they work from home anyway. So it's, it's uh, not a big deal at all. And then thankfully, technology such as this Zoom call, we're able to consult with clients. We're able to uh, you know, have, have team meetings and, and all those sort of things. You and I were both on a, on a meeting this morning of probably 60, 70 people. And so that really helps. Um, my main issue is I didn't realize, what, realize I am an extrovert, apparently. I miss my people. I see so many people on a daily and weekly basis. And, uh, and right now, you know, I, I've, I've originated businesses is, is just like usual. I've, I've originated several loans, uh, both purchases and refinances in the last uh, several weeks. And, uh, and, you know, I don't I always offer a face to face. And right now uh, we don't, unless, unless it's absolutely necessary, we can, but, uh, but like title companies don't let any of us attend the closings by and large. They only want the borrower to be there. So, um, you know, I think all that'll swing back. Um, there, there's been conversations about, will this have long-term societal changes due to this short-term issue? I don't, I don't think so. I'm, I miss my, my, coffees and lunches and meetings with my, with my colleagues. And, and I'm, I'm sure most other people do as well. We're just a social people. Um, that's probably the reason why you love real estate and I love mortgage lending is I get to hang out with my best friends all the time. My wife says I play for a living. So, um, and, and that's true. I mean, how, how, you can, how why, why not? Right. I'm sorry. If you, if you can play for a living, why not? If you can why have not? fun Absolutely. while you're working, please do. Absolutely. If you can have fun doing what you do, that's great. You never work a day in your life that way. So, um, but it's, I, it's, uh, I think it's I work every different. day of my life, <laughs> <laughs> but it's well, good. It I enjoy it. Absolutely.
Well, it's, it's challenging, um, but you work with some great people. You help people fulfill the American dream of, of owning a home. You help people set themselves up for their future. Uh, real estate is a fantastic investment vehicle. Um, historically, way, way more stable than the stock market. And so it's, it's, a, it's a great chance to be a part of, of people's lives, um, improving their lives. Um, and uh, and it's, just, it's just a blessing to be in this, in this world. That it is. That it is. So last question. You've been you've been in uh, Middle Tennessee real estate for, for 20 years. Yeah. Yep. Um, what do you see going forward? Where are we? Are we headed up? Are we heading down? Is it going to be flat for 10 years? What's the story? Wow. All the data says we're heading up, um, that uh, there's no reason to think that Middle Tennessee won't continue to grow, uh, probably at the same pace that it has grown and, you know, for several years. Um, and, uh, you know, Nashville's growing, which, which fuels all the surrounding area. Uh, we have a lot of move in business. It's funny. You, so many, nobody has a home phone anymore. Right. And so, so many cell phone numbers aren't from this area code because they, they've moved into this area from all over the country. Um, and I think it's a great thing. I think it makes for a vibrant community. Um, Murfreesboro is a wonderful place to, to live and work and my home body. So I stay, I'll stay in Murfreesboro most of the time. And, uh, but, uh, it's. I just see tremendous opportunities here. I see opportunities for small business um, to, to continue to grow and to be the backbone of our economy. Um, and I, I don't see real estate taking a taking any sort of hit during this. Could there be a short term decline? Absolutely, of course. I mean, I, my, phone, my phone is certainly not ringing quite as much right now as it would normally moving into the purchase season of the spring. but. I don't see any reason to think that this won't swing back and and, uh, and just be a great great year for us. Uh, and uh, it's not just me; I get that from all the data I see and and from the other talking heads that the economy is going to come out of this. And I believe that means our local economy as well. Yeah. yeah. Buffini said the spring push is going to happen in the fall. Could be. Yeah. yeah. Just nudge it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I'm hopeful for the future. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Marty. I appreciate oh, the conversation. Awesome. It was great getting to talk to you, Aaron. Absolutely. I'm going to put contact information down there. Um, okay to put your website. Or, Absolutely. Um, all right. Good deal. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a great Thank one. Thank you. Have all a right. great day. Good to all see right. you, bud.